bad dialogue is, is like 90%, 95% of television. And most television dialogue is just really functional and talks about the plot and ping-pongs. It's like you're, you're absolutely in trouble when people are actually, this sounds weird, but when they're actually talking to each other. Where they go, what are you doing here? I'm doing this. Why? Oh, because I did this. Oh, who said so? He did. Why? That's just rubbish. That's just to explain the plot. It's just filling two pages, actually. I saw a drama once that, that I won't name, but it, its opening line of dialogue was, Happy wedding day, sis. Like, oh, wedding? Sister? Right, got it. It's like, ouch! And who calls their sister sis? It's like, you know, it doesn't exist. It's, and you shouldn't write like that. You, you, you're giving up all responsibility if you start, if you... You know, it's like you are faced with those scenes where you've got to say that someone's their father or someone's brother to this character. And you must not write dialogue that says, well, you would say that, being my brother. You know, that's, that's so often you hear that on telly, and you're just doing a bad job if you're doing that. And I know why people do it, because they're sitting at home going, how can I explain this is the brother? You've just got to write it better. Or you've just got to... There's a great phrase that Jimmy McGovern uses, that he says, I would rather be confused for ten minutes than bored for five seconds. In good dialogue, they're not really listening to each other. It's like that great phrase, which is that the, the opposite of listening is waiting because you're just waiting to say your next thing. And that's everyone in life all the time. People hardly ever listen to each other. It's like when you're writing dialogue, it's actually two monologues that just connect sometimes. A good dialogue just bristles and sounds like two people in a room instead of a page of dialogue going chunk, 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 like that. I don't know, I think. Does that make sense? Yes, no, that makes perfect sense. I wasn't listening, obviously. I was thinking of my next <laughs> question. <laughs> what, whatever, yeah, what, yeah, that makes sense. Where do you want to start? Um, the inside's bigger than the outside? Yes. It's alien? Yeah. Are you alien? Yes. Is that all right? Yeah. It's called the TARDIS, this thing. T-A-R-D-I-S. That's time and relative dimension in space. <laughs> and sometimes there are really functional things like plot exposition, especially something like Doctor Who, where it has to be more functional than anything else. We've got to say, this computer has this function, it does that, but... But then you just get that over with. It's like then you've got the doctor to just come in and say those things. Get it open. <laughs> What's wrong with your sonic screwdriver? Nothing. <laughs> sonic Blaster, 51st century. Weapon factories of Villengard. You've been to the factories? Once. Well, they're gone now, destroyed. Main reactor went critical, vaporized a lot. Like I said, once. There's a banana grove there now. I like bananas. Bananas are good. I remember when I, when yeah. I was trying to write Dead Set, Weirdly, I looked at a script for um, Ultimate Force, which was the Ross <laughs> Kemp SAS, the, and I was really impressed with the with the stage directions, which were action. How hard is action yeah. to write? It's really hard. So isn't how it? do you how do you how much attention do you pay to oh, stage directions? Tons, and... absolutely tons. It's as it's as important as the dialogue. It's like it's because what you're doing is getting it across to the director, who will then get it across to the audience. So you've got to be so precise with it and not. Lengthy is nothing where you know it's like it's like in a novel. You know when you turn a page of a novel and there's no paragraph break, you go, oh shut up. Like, <laughs> paragraphs are good, and it's the same on a script. It's like the more things, if there's a great big chunk, oh you're bored already. It's like I, I literally describe characters with three adjectives. It's like if Stan walks in the room, I say he's 45, fat, angry. And you've got him. You know, is that there? You've got him. Then you can elaborate from that. There's more to say about Stan, but it's like you don't need. You know, the script is there to explain the rest of you. And a bad script goes. He was brought up here. He's the sort of man who never takes fools gladly. Everyone always says that. And it's like all those. It's like, but but way beyond character descriptions. It's like, you know, if it's a chase sequence, the words you use should be exciting. And I use less full stops. I use dashes. Then I start a sentence with a dash. If it's a chase, you go. And the doctor's running. You start with an and, you know, and it's and, and then you go you do a line break, and so the door blows open. So it feels as fast and as exciting as you know. Big blocks of prose aren't exciting. And stage directions should represent the dynamic you need to get from one place or another. I mean, somebody if somebody's got to answer the door, you have to write that. See, learning how to edit stage directions teaches you how to use dialogue efficiently. Often, sort of new writers don't bear in mind how much something's going to cost, and so they'll sort of write in, you know, I don't know, a scene on a spaceship or something willy-nilly. I mean, in, because you've got all this experience, to what extent are you bearing in mind the practicalities of actually shooting the thing while you're writing it? I think you try and write with two heads on in that regard, that you're like, oh, let's totally disregard that, whatever is funniest, 
but you're always going, look, don't put it on a fucking aircraft carrier because that's just not going to happen. So, um, and it's also sometimes it's more like pity for the actors. You don't want to dump David Mitchell in a freezing lake in the middle of December because <laughs> everyone's going to be unhappy, especially him. I think actually that sort of stuff you is a bit. It's almost a shame because I think you do. One does become quite aware of that of, of the the, yeah. the physical endurance aspect, which is quite great for performers. Uh, and it's probably not to the to the no. advantage of the of the comedy, but shove him in the freezing lake. <laughs> exactly. He deserves it. When, when you're writing, um, to what extent are you writing for a particular audience oh, or a particular tricky, viewer? Not, I know because you see, it's my job as a writer to sit here and say you're just there to be the writer and to tell the story and to serve the story, and every single writer has to give that response. And I'm now in the really weird position of having written something. With Doctor Who, where I really, really thought about the audience, so I knew it's a big, public, expensive show. So I really, really aimed it at women, aimed it at children, aimed it at men, aimed it at all those demographics, and it's the most successful thing I've done. So that's a nightmare. It fucks every writing theory in my head. <laughs> it's a very focus-grouped show, Doctor Who. It was invented from a focus group in 1963. It was planned by a committee full of people to fill the gap after Grandstand and Jukebox Jury. It was a focus group invented show. In, honestly, that goes against everything I, know, I, I know, and believe the, about focus groups. I know, and it's the longest-running <laughs> drama in the country. It's just weird. It's wrong, isn't it? It just defies all the rules, Doctor Who. And now I find myself in that position of it breaking all my rules, and it's clearly working, and that's wrong. How long does it take you to write an episode? It takes about a month. Aggregated out, because you, we, do, you know, we do it in these weird bits, like we do... A, a, a month of doing all our stories and then you know at the end we're doing lots of rewrites but the whole process takes six months usually for us to write six episodes i've written them in four days in my time and normally i'd say about two weeks or three weeks but that's just the typing it's like the thinking has gone on for years i think the last one was about three years but um uh state of play episode three i wrote in three days S episode four took me seven weeks because it had a bigger job to do. I try and do office hours, which never work. And basically what happens is that I, I learned uh, quite early on that I can write quickly. Um, so I used to write an episode of EastEnders, sometimes overnight. In fact, I went back to do a, a, an episode last year, which was a one-off. I said I'd never go back and do it anymore. But it sounded like a great way to sign out, which was the first soap monologue, which I did with uh, June Brown, Doc Cotton. Um, and I went into the office at... I think about 6.30 in the evening, bottle of Bacardi, bottle of Coke, ice bucket, 40 fags, and woke up about four in the morning uh, on, the, on the keypad, I actually had all the letters printed on my cheek, um, with my wife, Tracy, tapping me on the shoulder with a bacon signing and a mug of tea. And I looked up and I'd been crying and sobbing, fag ash and snot everywhere, and I'd written Fade Out. And I thought, oh, fuck, I've finished.